Seahorses are incredibly unique animals in many ways, like the males being able to get pregnant, but also just because of where they get their name, their peculiar horse-like body shape. But despite their strange appearance, they are actually just fish, and their ancestors dating back many millions of years ago would have been completely recognisable as regularly shaped fish. In fact, tuners are more closely related to seahorses than they are to salmon. Although their equine body shape may be the reason for their fame, it actually makes them very bad swimmers, making them both slow and inefficient at moving through the water. In fact, most seahorses can barely move more than a few metres after an hour of swimming. So why did seahorses take such a different evolutionary pathway to other fish? How did they adapt this strange body shape? At a glance, seahorses may look incredibly different to the majority of fish, but under closer inspection you can identify many typical fish features. They have a dorsal fin and they have pectoral fins, all of which would have been inherited by their more typical fish ancestors, and then were just highly modified to adapt to their environment. So seahorses no longer swim using their tail, and instead beat their dorsal fin to propel them along, which is slow and uses a lot of energy. Unfortunately, the fossil record for seahorses isn't very good. The oldest fossil of a seahorse is known from Slovenia, and is dated to around 13 million years ago. It was named Hippocampus slovenicus, and it just looked like a slightly slimmer version of a modern seahorse. However, genetic studies have shown that the seahorse's closest relatives are pipefish, and that these animals branched away from each other around 25 million years ago in the late Oligocene, which in geologic terms is not very long ago which means that the seahorse evolved relatively recently, and so they still have a lot of living relatives that came from lineages that didn't change as much, which means that there are living fish that show the transition of how seahorses may have evolved. Seahorses are in a family known as the Singnathids, that also contains pipefish, sea dragons, but also trumpetfish. Some pipefish, known as the pygmy pipehorses, look just like seahorses, complete with a coiling tail. However, along with a few other things that differentiate them from seahorses, pygmy pipehorses still don't swim in an upright position. However, most pipefish have still retained their tail fins from their ancestors, but whereas trumpetfish have a fairly seahorse-shaped head, their body is a much more typical fish shape. And the closest relatives to the Singnathids are the sticklebacks, that have the same fin placement as some of the Singnathids, including some species like the sea stickleback that have long and slender snouts. Singnathids are grouped together because all of these creatures have fused jaws, giving them their long and unique snout shape, the name Singnathidae meaning together jaw. This arrangement may seem strange, but it is actually very effective, and all of the family, including seahorses, are effective predators that catch their prey by sucking them up. With the exception of the trumpet fish, which sometimes hunts larger prey, all of the Singnathids have specialised to hunt small prey, like small fish, shrimp, and copepods and their long snouts are very good for catching this sort of prey. A lot of these tiny creatures have inexhaustible lists of animals that like to eat them, and so have evolved many methods of escaping capture. Copepods, which are tiny crustaceans, are very sensitive to vibrations in the water, and if they sense a predator approaching, they can dart up to a metre away in a few seconds, which is incredibly quick for a microscopic creature. But despite this, and that seahorses are very slow swimmers, research has shown that seahorses are very effective hunters of these creatures. This is because their streamlined snout shape doesn't disturb the water as much, allowing them to get very close, giving them the best chance to catch their prey. This explains why these animals have long horse-like snouts. However, while seahorses shared many traits with the broader family, they were the only member of this group to swim upright, which gives them their classic S-shaped neck and the reason why they evolved to swim like this may have been caused by their diet as well. When pipefish and seahorses suck up their small prey, they tilt their head backwards just before it has a chance to swim away, and it has been shown that the S shape of the seahorse's neck allows them to reach up slightly higher than pipefish, giving them a better chance of catching their prey. Unlike pipefish, seahorses are ambush predators. They are considerably slower and tire more easily, but have adapted to have better camouflage, and so they just stay hidden in one spot, anchoring themselves with their coiled tail, and then just wait for the food to come to them. So it makes sense that they would need more reach while hunting. Genetic studies have shown that the seahorse and pipefish diverged about 20 to 30 million years ago, 
Around this time, due to cooling global temperatures, sea levels were lowering, creating vast amounts of new shallow water areas of seagrass habitats, especially between Oceania and Asia. These new seagrass habitats would have given animals more opportunities to camouflage themselves, which could explain why the seahorse started to adapt more features that made it a better ambush predator at the expense of being able to swim well. Another unique trait that defines the Cygnathids is that all of these creatures have male pregnancy. After Cygnathid females lay their eggs, the male fertilizes and then carries the eggs, and even provides nutrients for them while in the pouch. All of the Cygnathid males get pregnant, however the way they do this differs among the different species. Male sea dragons attach the eggs to their tails, whereas male seahorses have a specialized pouch to carry the eggs, and male pipefish do both, depending on their species. And the way the males carry the eggs is the biggest difference between the species of this family. Cygnathids are currently the only group of animals that are known to breed in this way, and there are a few theories of why they may do this. One being that it gives them the ability to produce more offspring in a shorter period of time, making it more likely that they would pass on their genes. Female seahorses deposit their eggs into the male's pouch while mating, so the male seahorse is carrying one set of eggs, while the female seahorse is creating more eggs. And so the moment the male seahorse has delivered the babies, they are ready to get pregnant again, straight away meaning that seahorses are able to produce a lot of offspring in a short period of time. And this would be an incredibly useful adaptation for seahorses, seeing that on average, less than 0.1% of seahorse young reach adulthood. But also creating new life takes a lot of energy, and this arrangement means that the burden of the extra food and energy that is required for the pregnancy is split among both parents. The female uses her energy to fill the egg casings with nutrients, but the male seahorse provides a safe controlled environment for the young seahorses. The problem is that pregnancy has evolved multiple times among many different groups of animals, and in practically all cases it's the female animal that adapts to getting pregnant, and seahorses and some of their relatives are unique among the animal kingdom in having male pregnancies. So it isn't entirely understood why seahorses have taken this evolutionary path when almost no other animal has. So it turns out that the seahorse's horse-like appearance wasn't in any way due to convergent evolution, and it turns out that its horse-shaped neck and snout are just very well shaped for being oceanic ambush predators. So the unique pressures of their environment took them down a strange evolutionary road until they ended up partially resembling horses. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons for supporting the channel, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.